Yeah, we're getting a little, little bit of an echo, but that's okay. Um, okay, we're gonna call the Marion Township Board of Supervisors meeting to order. The time is now 9.03 a.m. First item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. I'll ask everyone to please rise. The Pledge of Allegiance is the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Yeah, I'm actually gonna try something. Hello, hello, testing. Kim, I can hear you. Okay. Testing. One, two, three. A little bit of a Jim, can you hear me? We hear you. Okay. You sound very clear. I'll figure that out, but I think it's just that I got to rebalance the speakers. Okay. okay. Uh, anybody wishing to address the board, um, we'll have you come up to the front or to the podium, and I'll make sure that the mics capture you on the, on the recording. Um, anybody that is interested, there are masks and hand sanitizer at the front of the room, and we ask that, uh, myself included, uh, put your cell phones on vibrate so that we don't disturb the flow of the meeting. As always, things are recorded for audio and video. Uh, so at this time, I'll open the floor for public comment. Seeing none, we'll move on to the main items for discussion. Um, Irene is attending virtually, so uh, Irene, just feel free to speak up at any time. Items for discussion number one is Act 537. Uh, we have our friends here from Hydra Terra today. Um, They've given us a, a very good comparison for the um, gravity-based sewer versus low pressure, along with kind of a, an idea of the total cost of ownership over a 20-year span. So we need to look at that. And I want to make sure that we have the breakdown, the appropriate breakdown that we can present to the community when we have that uh, the town hall. Did you want to say something, Chris? Okay, so we'll uh, we'll finish this point up, and then we'll actually, I think, circle back to public comments since we had a. a... Irene's on a time crunch. So Irene's on a time crunch. So okay, that's why I put her item next. Okay, okay. so we're going to do Irene's item next. Okay, um, okay. so with Hydroterra, uh, what we want to do is we want to set up a, a time that we can do a, a meeting with DEP. My assessment on this is that we should reach out to DEP and see what works for them. What's the best time, uh, and then. Kind of coordinate our schedules based on if they say we can do like, I don't know, like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday between 10 and noon or something like that. Um, seeing is you probably have the best uh, rapport, I'll say, with DEP. Uh, I think it would be best if we have you kind of initiate that on our behalf and then set it up. Jim, do you, do you feel the same? Or, yeah. That's okay. Fine. Um, and then the next thing that we would need to do as the board is decide on a date for the, the town hall. Chances are we don't want to have it here because we have very limited seating capacity if we have a decent turnout, which means we need to, to see if we can use like the firehouse or if we can maybe rent one of the, the church basements or see that the sound company that bought Reed's church, if we could use that, um, do a little poking around and see if we can't get a, a bigger venue that has a, the ability to have like microphones and things like that. So um, with that said, I will turn it over to Hydra Terra and let them share the good news about the LSA grant. Joe, if you don't mind coming up here so everybody can hear you. <laughs> yeah, I think. <laughs> it's just the recording. We can't hear anybody from the audience on the recording. <laughs> oh, here, just turn the microphone up. It'll be, it'll be okay for a bit. Yeah. Yeah, I just got to figure out why it's grabbing audio out of the speakers back there. Okay, why well, it's not. Yep, you're it's good. On, yeah. You're on. Uh, so anyway, we did go through a, a comparison of the gravity sewer versus uh, a low pressure sewer, and uh, I had sent that up to the town. Or Kimberly had sent that up to the township. I guess we we really would like to get together, and I think that's what you're talking about, Mr. Chairman, is getting together in a public meeting. Um, 
I don't know if a true public meeting is necessary unless we're going to change direction, right? So if there's some consideration of change in direction, then I would caution that we should probably meet with DEP to understand I, I think we should meet would, which way that would go. Yeah, I think we should meet with DEP first and then have the town hall based on if we are going to change direction. But even if we aren't changing direction, I think it's an important thing for us to sit with the community, give that as an open venue and explain kind of where we are, why we're at where we are and what we're going to have to do to move forward and what we're doing as a board to try to make sure that it, it's not a huge burden or a huge imposition. So that really understanding is the, the name of the game here that they understand that like while we may not like it we are under certain legal auspices to do certain things we're being compliant and that means this this and this but we're also to try to you know make sure that we don't get railroaded and have a, a 10 million dollar bill that we have to pay for we're working with you we're working with other agencies like the Wilmersdorf sewer authority we're working with everybody else that's in the mix to try to make sure that this is as cost effective and feasible as possible otherwise the kind of the, the last step there if we can't afford it is we have to challenge DEP and say look we want to do it we've complied we're playing by the rules but it's just it's financially not there um and thankfully they've actually been pretty reasonable about adjusting timelines and things like that so far that hope here without having to go the litigation route is that they'll see the reason of okay it's a let's say we switch to low pressure and it's six million dollars instead of ten we don't get enough grants on that it's still going to be unaffordable so if we say we only got a million dollars worth, worth of grants we we can't realistically finance five million dollars that hopefully it won't have to go the, the lawsuit route they say okay we'll we'll try again next year so that's that's what we're we're kind of striving for is we'll we'll play ball on this because we legally have to um we just need to make sure that it's actually an achievable thing to do and I think you guys are on the same page with us on that, but I, I agree with you. I think it's important to meet with DEP first. That way, if there is any substantial change in direction or update, that that's can be relayed. It can be incorporated into the message that we're giving to the community. Yeah, I would agree wholeheartedly. Just, just as an aside, too, I had a phone call from, um, I think he's a senator, Chris Gebhardt's, yeah. Gebhardt's office, yeah. um, and they're very much willing to help us try to find money. Excellent. That's great. Um, so and then, he thought he would be here this morning. He's not. So, oh, it's okay. I mean, um, people are busy and it's a yeah, Saturday yeah, morning. So but he, let's. Yeah, he was more than helpful in saying, um, you know, call us. Yeah, this. We, we can help you out here. This might be a good opportunity. I still owe Kim, I still owe you the letter for yeah, Commissioner I Leinbach. Know. I know. I'm sorry. Um, but it might be helpful if when we go to do like the, the town hall, if Chris Gebhard or um, Christian Leinbach or somebody from their offices could be there to say like, look, we understand the, the monumental task that this is, the huge costs that's associated with it. And as much as is physically possible, we're committed to helping you find the funds to do it. Um, knowing that we have things that we're, we're lining things up that we're working on trying to do this and it's not just us going like oh well we got to do it we got to do it is is I think a, a huge difference in narrative um, so anyway I apologize I kind of no, 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 this is all conversation good. my way again no that's um, okay it's, it's okay uh, I just want to make sure that that you know the board and the staff understand uh, the differences in in the cost and mm -hmm. how they are really spread out across you know yeah. 100 years let's say yeah so my cost opinion was breaked up broken down present worth analysis was broken down into 25 year increments and you could see it hopefully you had a chance to look mm -hmm. at it but if not uh you know you can always call me up or call kimberly in the office i'm glad to walk you through the analysis uh irene that goes out to you as well um hopefully you yeah, can hear me peter yeah peter just a quick question are you able to put that stuff up on the screen for our meeting so that we could review um, it after? yeah give me a second yeah yeah well i can't see it now but at least up for I'll, thursday night yeah Is, was it in the packet yeah i don't remember okay that's fair that's fair i'll just pull it up <laughs> Two days ago. <laughs> well, 
Well, there's there's some loans yeah. like some of the um, RUS loans are like one yeah. percent and things like that. But the goal here is as much grant money as possible because you do still have to pay back the loans, obviously. Right. And then because yeah. of them being a longer span, you end up paying more on on interest. Um, but if he was saying help to a I, I have it. Yeah, I'm quite easy to do a straight here. All right. And I apologize for the small font size on this. I mean, I mean, I can, I can zoom in a little bit. I think. You know, it's sixty plus years old. You think yeah. I'd have done a little larger, but okay. so yeah, <laughs> engineers are trained to try and get everything on one page, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> At any rate, so uh, Irene, can you see that then? I'm in my car. I can't see anything except the road in front of me. Yeah, she's oh, she drives. Oh, okay. okay. We'll, we'll go over it. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's I, I'm just, I just, I just, maybe watch yeah, later yeah. or whatever. Um, the cost difference between low pressure and gravity over the 25 year span was low pressure was between three and $4 million cheaper for total cost of ownership. Some of that gap starts to close as time goes on because with the, the gravity system, we're only replacing the one pump at the pumping station rather than homeowners replacing individual pumps, which just by the, the, the virtue of quantity adds up over time. The benefit, though, is that it's personal responsibility. If you're taking good care of your pump or maybe you're somebody who doesn't use it a whole lot, the lifespan on that pump is obviously going to be considerably longer than uh, somebody who likes to put like flushable wipes uh down the drain or you know uh, you have a huge family of eight people or something like that um use is going to be your, your primary driving factor and then it's you on a homeowner to replace it rather than you know the township bearing some of the burden um I, forgive me i don't remember where exactly in the the long term like the 50 year that's the gap starts to close more but i know it, it closes a little bit but it's still substantially cheaper for the low pressure than it is for the gravity sewer yeah, at 50 years, you're about a million dollar separation. Yeah. Uh, so I would say that after 75 years, now it's a Yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah, but we're, we're talking 75 years worth of difference. 75 yeah. Years, and that's yeah. that's a pretty long time to have a like yeah. an, an, an ROI one thing. So um, we'll obviously want to discuss this Thursday night more. But personally, I'm, I'm leaning towards a shift towards the low pressure. Um, coupled with the fact that because of the way everything is in our relatively close proximity to Wolmelsdorf, if there was another area that needed a low pressure or even a gravity system, they could just kind of come in in tandem to that. We wouldn't have to worry about resizing the whole system. They could just have a separate feed into the, the trunk. The trunk. I was gonna say I was gonna say lateral, but the the main line to Wolmelsdorf that Wolmelsdorf has the interceptor at like Boyers or wherever it is. Um, so we, we have scalability. We're not shooting ourselves entirely in the foot. We're just making it a little less uh, able to be expanded in the future. So one of the big, well, there's, there's obviously some major differences between low pressure and gravity sewer. Uh, we did go through some points of comparison. Uh, you know, gravity operates 24-7. That's on the next sheet, I yeah. think, Peter. I was actually um sewage is conveyed at the same state so i'm just going to highlight some of the gravity things here sewage is conveyed at the same state as it's discharged from the house in other words you know your number two comes out number two your number one stays number one and your paper pretty much is just floating around in there mm -hmm. With a, with a low pressure sewer system, you have to send it through a grinder system. So it turns into a slurry so that it can be pumped in a small diameter pipe without clogging. Uh, but then there is the downside is that flushable wipes, flushable with, uh, you know. Quotes around it. Exactly. Uh, flushable wipes do create a little bit of a problem with a low pressure system. So with that aspect alone, there is an educational part that has to go along with that, right? So you're gonna to wanna to 
have an open forum with the township folks, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, the township folks, that there are these concerns. And Greece is going to be more of a problem because you have a low pressure system, smaller diameter. Then, um, you know, there's a number of differences. I, I'm, you know, I'm not here to push one or the other because, I mean, this decision is absolutely up to the township if they decide to shift gears and go in a different direction. I completely understand. Um, I did also send in some testimonials that uh, I reached out to three different townships, uh, two in Montgomery, one in Delaware County. I'm sure there's some in Berks County too, but, uh, and talked to some of those managers or engineers that um, exist in those communities. Uh, the first one is Franconia Township in, in Montgomery County. I spoke with G George Whitmire, who's the municipal um authority manager he's got a lot of experience been there probably 40 years probably has you know 40 years experience in wastewater uh he's really pleased with what how the low pressure uh, yeah. works in his township the one thing he did mention is that they brought low pressure in so that growth would not happen in the area so kind of a balance, right? So if I put a, a, an eight inch gravity line down through the middle of the borough, we can go to 700,000 gallons potential. You have put a two inch line down there and you're gonna be cut off to 50, 60, depending on how big the diameter of the pipe is. Yeah. But on the other hand, you know, you might not see that for 75 years, it's hard to know. Yeah, I, I personally, and again, I'm just gonna, armchair here for a second. I think low pressure probably fits the bill from a financial standpoint. It fits the bill from a, a zoning standpoint and in, in the kind of use that we want to encourage along certain sections. Um, whereas other sections like the other side of 422, if they needed to expand, they simply put another line in. That we, we keep Main Street as a, a quiet little, I'll say hamlet, uh, like I'll, I'll say small Lidditz, um, where it's mostly residential, maybe a little bit of business, and you don't allow structurally for a lot of growth other than, okay, we're putting in a, a new home or there's going to be uh, like a, a, a duplex, like a townhouse um, that, that keeps in line kind of with the spirit of what I feel Marion Township is um, and doesn't, like you said, structurally allow for somebody to go, hey, we're going to put in a, a, an apartment complex or, you know, whatever the case is um, or high density residential, I guess would be a better blanket term. But um, when Irene, since you're driving, I don't want you to take too much focus off the road. Um, when you're here Thursday night, let's talk about that in earnest, because that's one of the things that I, I, we need to have a decision on before we meet with the DEP to say, hey, we've looked at this. It's a change to the plan, but here's why we think it's better. Here's why we think it's a better fit for us. And we could look, lay out the laundry list of it's cheaper. It's going to take 75 years before they, the, the total cost of ownership closes the gap and they become equal. Like that's the tipping point. Um, it's better from a zoning standpoint. It is more in line with what we're, we're looking to achieve with our, our community development um, and see where they stand with that. Because it's a, it's a plan update. It's a minor update. For we would have to do it. Yeah. We would have to do a plan update. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, that's, that's and, fine, and, but you know, I hate opening up. And Marion Township. But, but, but. Sorry, this, say again. This, this census compared to our prior census Marion Township has had very little growth. Yeah, and we, we so haven't had growth. The, so this, yeah, this would effectively we, kind of be locking us little. into that level other than if right. we have developments. Yeah. Um, other places like the, the property behind Stonecroft that was the, the cold storage place. Like if somebody wanted to develop that for housing, that would be really our only area of growth because of how many other properties in the township are either ag preserve or under an easement. Right. And with, with what our current zoning all laws are there's not really much room for growth so correct correct i don't think we have any high density residential ldr there's I mean, a I mean, high, density. high density i don't think we have a single high density residential area I don't the the only yeah. place that would allow it would be on 422 where things are zoned commercial because commercial is the higher one you can always do lower than what your current zoning rating is Okay, so just kind of yep. getting back a little bit to the testimonials. Uh, the second one from Upper Milford, 
kind of pointed out the same thing. There was consideration uh, or concern, I'm sorry, uh, with, again, some rags or flushable wipes in the system. And the third, from Upper Providence, uh, a large portion of Upper Providence is, is under low pressure sewer. Uh, so this is down closer to Philadelphia, but there's 2,200 homes down there. Uh, and uh, the engineer that I spoke with, he was quite satisfied with what was going on out there. One thing he did point out to me that I want to make sure that the, the township's aware of is with a low pressure sewer system, 300 units, somebody is going to have to answer that phone call when a pump plugs up mm. or, you know, somebody needs a new pump because it will happen. Mm. and. Uh, somebody's going to need to be on the telephone and kind of champion the low pressure sewer system because there is that operational yeah. problem uh, associated with it. But uh, of the three testimonials, they were all happy that they went with the low pressure system. Uh, one Again, one or two of them were to kind of control the growth in their township. Uh, Upper Providence Township, really, they just keep, keep connecting and growing portions of the sewer system um to allow for development so they're running that parallel low pressure line and things of that nature um we are currently going back to the manufacturer they have a model that they kind of put together and it's based on the number of homes that are connected and the frequency that the gravity pump with the grinder pump would turn on excuse me uh, and so we brought back to them, okay, let's say that Marion Township decides they want to put public water down, you know, through the center of the village. What does that do? So we're considering, we're trying to figure out how much growth could occur in Stoutsburg, you know, maybe one uh, twin or something turns into a four bedroom or I'm sorry, you know, four unit yeah. apartment building. What is, what does what is that percentage of growth where all of a sudden now we're over the top? Yeah. So I don't have that information for you today, but we are looking at that. Um, seems like there's still going to be room to move if you know if indeed you brought down public water down Main Street and you had say 20 percent of the homes jump up and go to four <laughs> bedroom. Very likely you're still okay. Okay. All well, right. Good very likely you're still okay, but I don't know that exact number yeah. and I hope to have that for you guys in, in within a week. Okay. Um, I really think that's it with the, you know, I'd like to go into more detail so you guys can figure out what, what direction you want to go. But, uh, you know, a low pressure sewer system is cheaper on the initial cost, right? It's cheaper for at least 50 years. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, it is a piece of mechanical equipment, right? It's going to need some education, right? So the homeowners are going to definitely need to understand what they need to do to operate that system. Yeah. Uh, make sure that it's maintained on semi-annual, every other year. Probably have somebody come in and take a look at it. Um, I, wonder, I wonder if that's something that we could get with the SEO or work out with sewer, like the septic tank pumping companies. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, if we we have a little bit of, uh, I'll say, bulk bargaining power here that we have about 500 homes that we could say, hey, we're going to set up a schedule like we're doing with the, the pump out maintenance. People are going to complain about having to do stuff, but just as a safety thing, every every two years or something, you have somebody come out and check your pump and make sure that it's well, there working. Well, uh, DEP leans towards the township having an agreement with every home well, well we, we we what i'm saying is we would, that would have that we would do that but we there. would kind of take some of the the onus of making sure that it's through like the seo rather than you just have to do this and you get your own personnel which we could also always have as an option but operationalize it as like the same thing with the, the pump outs the seo comes out checks your pump make sure you're good goes on his way otherwise he recommends that oh, it's, you know it's going to fail sometime soon you got to replace it and then see if there's anything that we can do. Again, just because we have more homes, we might be able to get pumps at a, a cheaper cost than if you were going to buy them yourself. But that's, I'll say, minutia of, of the, the equation that we have to work out later. 
And just to kind of wrap up, uh, all three of the testimonials basically said if uh, the township were to make sure that the contractor that was installing the grinder pumps, now we're looking at specific manufacturer here and mm -hmm. recommend that we write a specification if indeed we went in that direction to force, um, it's, it's called a uh, semi-positive displacement pump rather than a centrifugal pump because they have certain advantages and that's who we kind of have uh, molded this model around. Uh, anyway, we would recommend that whoever comes out is certified to install this specific type of pump because the, the uh, system supplier then would change the warranty from a two year period to five years. So a huge difference, huge difference in, warranty. in warranty just by you having that install or being certified. And that doesn't mean that, you know, Jimmy John down the street can't do it. He just needs to get certified by uh, the supplier, anywhere. and then you know they just want to go through certain bells and whistles of the system and Achilles heel that you know for the install. Uh, but at any rate, so the warranty goes from two to five years with the certified installer. So there's a lot of things that kind of lean towards the low pressure system. There are certainly are hurdles that additional hurdles that we would have to jump over. Um, and I think just to kind of sum things up. So the more connections you have on your sewer system, the less advantageous it's going to be to use a low pressure. Gravity wins as more people come in. The deeper we need to go with the sewer system, or uh, let me see, let me back up. So, um, the further we have to dig, the more expensive. The further, we have, the further down yeah. we have to go underground, the more expensive it's going to be. And if we're digging sand from here to uh, Wilmelsdorf, that's not a big deal. But if we have to go through rock, now all of a sudden it, it jumps the price up, okay? So gravity sewers are anywhere from eight to 10 feet deep. Low pressure sewers can be three, four. Big difference. Uh, the other thing that you guys highlighted the other week is the, the excavation costs obviously are lower because of the, the depth, but there's less repair on the road because you're able to laterally bore rather than just digging a trench. Correct. So uh, got some good news, right, about the grant. Uh, I was going to let Kimberly up here, but I kind of throw a couple more technical things in there. So the way I kind of see things is that in preparation for public meeting, or I should say, you know, shortly after the meeting, and once the grants are in place, we should reconsider the three big factors in the design, because obviously they didn't grant us enough money to go all the way through the design. But uh, I think geological evaluation is going to be critical environmental study along the way to see where if there's any protected wetlands or anything else that might jump up from an environmental standpoint and then a survey. Uh, a lot of that stuff is subbed out from our company. So we wouldn't really actively be doing any design, but we'd be trying to figure out if low pressure wins even more depending on the geology, right? So we get the route. We go and do some borings along the way. If we start running into rock, yeah. now all of a sudden low pressure winds even more. I wonder if that's something that Chuck, like since it's outsourced, like third party by your company, if that's something our engineer would be. Able I don't to think do. that they. Well, I, I don't want to speak for them. Yeah. but I don't believe that they do okay. geo work. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we have a geologist that we work with. Generally. Okay. Um, so that's kind of where we're at. I don't know. If there's some next steps that Kimberly wants to talk about or you guys want to hear about on the grants, but we did get a, a small award portion of the, the project, which is good news. Uh, and DEP allowed us to kind of extend the date a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that, you know, when we sit down with DEP, we tell them, look, we're, we're, we want to build this for with no uh, penalty to our homeowners. Yeah. We're looking for money to get yeah. this done. We want to do it, but we're looking for money. And that's going to be our main goal is to continually apply for grants because they're still out there. They're going to be out there again next year and just start just on the way at the cost. You know, I agree. 
I'll be here for the next 10 years if you want me to come <laughs> on Saturday and say, yo, we're almost there. But, you know, for me, it makes sense that just a tremendous place. It's super There's one, yeah. We keep them banging on the door. And hey, well, we were here last year, but we didn't get everything we need. Yep. So they're going to say, okay, well, we'll get you a little bit closer. And that seems to be the trend right now. And that was one thing that Chris Gephardt's hearts, I forget his name, the guy who called, but he said they can, if we let them know that we're going after grants, they will put they'll, their two cents in and try to. They'll, they'll put some weight behind a little it. Bit. Yeah. yeah. So okay. we uh, submit Kimberly to help prepare a grant for a uh, community that we have in Chester County as part of. Um, obtaining letters of support, one of the representatives down there said, oh, well, we can fund a portion of this outside of the grant application. So all of a sudden they became aware of the project because of, I don't want to say the urgency, but the need for the project to move forward in that community. They wound up matching the grant that we got from LSA. So, you know, talk about the project, talk about the needs with everybody and spread the word and hopefully we get it through uh, some of the representatives and, and maybe some more money will come, come your way. Yeah, and I think that's the, the more people you have pushing for it, the easier it becomes for that, so. Yeah. Yeah, so that was one of the advantages, disadvantages, is that you're, there would be a requirement for about a three or four foot diameter well outside of the house. Mm -hmm. When I say well, that's not you know, it's, a it, drinking water well, but you know, a storage area, and then the pump would be within this vessel. Yeah, it's basically, it's a holding tank with a, with a pump to it, rather than just a holding tank right now, it doesn't have any pump in it. So, I see that as a disadvantage to kind of put that in somebody's yard. Um, no, there, it's it's like when you have a yeah, it, it's like the septic system. You have that like manhole thing on the top. Yes, honestly. Many homeowners could do the install themselves if they wanted to because it drops down and there's a slip coupling when you drop the pump down. So you got the, uh, your discharge side of the pump, and it, as it slides down some rails, it will meet right up with the discharge pump. So you just kind of slide it down a rail and then you're all that. That's yes, mm -hmm. so, uh, dripless connection. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you very much. We look forward to seeing the additional stuff that you're going to provide to us, and it's always a pleasure to see you. We appreciate all the hard work and helping us navigate this kind of complicated and, and dicey situation. This has been our pleasure. It's great to work with you all. So I guess um, you'd like me to go back to DEP and try and get some, some meeting dates that we can... Sit yes, and please. either go virtual or I I, mean, to me, I I'd prefer, I prefer in person. To drive to, down yeah. to, to Harrisburg. Yeah, I'd, and, and I'd prefer to drive out to Harrisburg as well and, and actually right, have so a face to face. We'll look for an in person meeting. Okay. All awesome. Right. Thank you. Thank, guys. You. Thank you very much. Thanks, okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is stock. Next item on the agenda is the computers and cybersecurity. Um, Irene, you'll be pleased. I looked through the, the computer this morning. I don't see anything malicious. I have it running a scan anyway. Uh, the only thing that okay. I think you noticed was there was a Chrome extension that got added, and it was just one of those stupid like helper like toolbar things. Um, with that yeah. said, though, you're you're not incorrect. There are some some areas for improvement for us with the computers and the this overall posture that we have for security and data management. Um, one of the things that I have been looking at, and I have some some figures here, is we could switch over to Teams. We had talked about that anyway, because Zoom costs us roughly about $180 a year for 
for what we use it for. If we switch over to the Microsoft environment, we'd be able to buy either one license just to keep the computer going. That's $8 a month, which is half of what Zoom is. Um, or if we bought licenses for quite literally every person in the office, Sue, Linda, you, Dan, me, Jim, John, if he was going to sign in and have an email, it would cost us $456 annually. The benefit to this is having a subscription for at least each one of the computers. So if we're looking at four computers, $4 a month, $8 for the one, we're talking a fraction of that, but that would give us full access to Teams. That would give us the full access to the Microsoft antivirus. That would give us the web versions of the Office apps like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, et cetera. Um, and we'd also be able to use uh, Azure Active Directory to manage the computers and the user accounts. So you wouldn't actually have a, a password saved on the computer. You'd actually be authenticating against something out on the internet. So we'd actually be able to have, Sue, if you signed into one of our computers, you'd use the same password in each place. If you changed it in one place, it would change in all of them. If you had a situation where you locked yourself out, I could sign in on, on the admin side and just reset it or clear it. Um, and it would do that on all of the computers. So we'd, we'd be kind of taking a step into uh, a more modernized uh, enterprise level of, of computer management rather than a mom and a pop small office. So we don't have to make a decision today. I'll go through more of the details Thursday night when you're here, but um, doing this while it has a slightly higher price tag would remove what we pay annually for the other email account, the office at mariontetownship dot or marionTWP.com. We could switch that over. That would be a re reduced cost. Um, we'd still have that email, but then we'd also have uh, emails for like secretary Sue at Marion Township, secretary Linda at Marion Township, um, Jim Brooks at marionteownship.com. Um, and we'd have all of that stuff centrally managed. And we'd also have uh, a backup that we would be able to back up anything that we store on the server to the Microsoft cloud. So every night it would just replicate up and it, we'd, we'd have something sitting there. If the building ever burnt down that we could just restore it from the cloud, so to speak. Um, the other benefit on I, this is, go ahead, I'm sorry, Irene. So my concern is there's no encryption. So the data going out, it's not encrypted, so that's the problem. Oh, no, we no, no, a sorry. Lot of... okay. Irene, the Microsoft traffic is is endpoint, at point to point encryption. Okay. So that's that's okay. okay. Um, you're if you're worried about there's there's two two schools of, of data classification for this. There's data in transit and data at rest. Oh, thank you, Joe. Um, so data data in transit. Thank you. Have a good one. Um, Data in transit, we don't have to worry about because your your email, your your Teams traffic, your traffic to Office 365, whether it's OneDrive or anything else, is all end to end. It's encrypted. The data at rest is a different story. Um, unless we start turning on BitLocker and going in and encrypting specific files, you're right now we're we are not encrypted for data at rest. And I think that's a problem. It is. It's not a, as honestly, it's not a super big problem because most of our stuff is paper copy, but it becomes more of a problem when we move to a more digital format. Right. And so if this computer is hacked or there's malware, whatever the case is, mm -hmm. we've lost, we've lost the township. I mean, there's just no way around it. Yeah. And this is where, if we have stuff backing up automatically to like OneDrive, you secured yourself against ransomware attacks you've secured yourself against single points of failure where if you have a, a computer die let's say sue's hard drive dies you're not going oh crap there was every digital record that we had so again well not while you're driving but let's talk about this thursday night and see if that's the direction we want to go yeah. this is the direction that a lot of industry has gone and the stuff that i priced out is actually a governmental license which means that any of the stuff okay. that's happening behind the scenes in the cloud is satisfying any of the regulatory and legal requirements around managing government data. So I guess the other part of this is um, I was listening to a lecture and it was talking about uh, cyber attack basically. We have to have a cyber attack plan in place. We also need to have an internet policy in place where users of the computer understand and know that this is a government computer 
um, that it's not to be used for any personal use at all. Uh, the other part of that is we need to have routine um, education on fishing schemes. And uh, that is an important thing to re-educate our own staff about routinely uh, because, you know, sometimes you look at something like, okay, this is safe, but in reality it's not. So, again, you know, I hate to say it, it puts more work on us, but if we make the process like a biannual event where this is routine education, computer usage of the um, office computers, and this is what you need to be aware of, I mean, all those things need to be in place, and the more people I've talked to, um, more people are surprised that we have fewer protections at, at this point. Honestly, I don't think this is something that that needs that should wait very long anymore because, unfortunately, you hear about townships and boroughs and cities being held hostage. I mean, I, I think this stuff needs to be put in place right away. Um, we need the computers network. I need to be able to get on the computer in the AA room. It, it, it's become more than difficult at this point. All my days off are spent trying to catch up on stuff that I can't do what I used to be able to do by coming in the office during the day and uh, working with who I need to to help me with a lot of these issues. And so without, I, I can certainly come in the evenings and early morning to do work by myself but I'm limited as to what I could do because she's my resource for, for most items that I have to take care of. So. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't disagree with any, yeah, any, and, any point and, of what you just said. And, right. And I have to say, I, I can't thank you enough, Peter, for all the work that you've done and all the support that you've had for all of us. But I also feel that it's a lot of work for one person. And so that's, that's my concern. You know, you've got a full-time job too. It's just, the stuff needs to get done and, and like sooner than later. Okay. So let me kind of give you a proposal on Thursday night for that. Sure. Um, when sure. Dan has some availability, this week's going to be kind of probably bad because of the Thursday night meeting. But um, if we can get in a night to pull wire, what I have to do is I have to basically move the, the stuff that's there from Comcast over to basically directly behind this wall and make sure all the, the wires are, are run and connected. So it's just gonna be a, honestly, a team effort. It's a lot easier with two people um, to string wires up through the conduit, get the conduit strapped to the wall, and then get everything terminated and tested. So probably looking at give like me, two nights. Give me a call. Give me a call. I've got a teenager that will be more than help, happy to help you, and he's 12. Okay, so, so that's, that's the first part of it. The second part of it is we have to address if the, the cybersecurity aspect of it that you, you flagged. If we're worried about data Absolutely. at rest, which if I'm honest from an assessment standpoint, it is kind of minimal. Data at rest, if we start encrypting the drives, it's only a big deal if somebody breaks in and steals the hard drive out of Sue's desk. Um, otherwise, data in transit and data storage are the two big, 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 big ones. We wanna make sure that we're, we're replicating somewhere that way if the building ever caught fire or got struck by lightning or fell into a sinkhole, I don't know. If there was any, yeah, it blew up because of, uh, of a gas leak or something. Um, anything like that, we would have redundancy that we're not relying on a, a single point of failure within the building. Um, both of those things are, are relatively easily achievable, but to be honest, it, it, it means we're gonna have to spend a little more money than we've been spending historically on, on this sort of thing. I think we need to, I think we have a responsibility, again, as a township, to be responsible for all that information that we have in our computers because there's quite a bit. I'm handling lots of financial information. I'm handling social security uh, numbers. This is stuff that I don't need to get out there. I need to make yep. sure that the information is being sent back and forth and it's safe. Yep, agreed. So I'll get something, a high level overview for you guys, you and Jim to look at on Thursday night. Um, like I said, right off the cuff, the easiest thing is we need to to relocate the stuff so that we're fully networked across the building. Um, and then we also need to look at getting uh, some semblance of account management and um, offsite backup, which we can, like I said, achieve in one fell swoop by going the, the Microsoft Cloud direction. So the good news though, is that there's nothing malicious on the computer. I'm glad to hear that, thank you. Okay, uh, we have anything more on that one? 
No, thank you very much. Okay. Um, I'm going to kind of rewind slightly since we had uh, somebody show up slightly later than the start of the meeting and we have a public comment. So I'll, I'll jump back to that. Um, Brett, if you want to. Uh, Jim, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's been it's been a morning. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, uh, sorry. So, yeah, Jim Donadini, if uh, turn the turn the mic on, uh, if you could, before you talk, you just press it and it'll turn it press and hold. It'll turn red on. There you go. Yeah. Jim Donadini, 198 Sweet Birch Lane, Stonecrop Village. You guys aware of a testing of the suppression system at Stonecrop? No. When are they doing it? Uh, they have not. Oh, jeez. <laughs> it's, it's another one of those, oh, <laughs> by the way, um, it, the concern with that is that, and I don't want to give you any kind of a report, but um, there are two hybrids now to be tested. The truck moving to the second one was off of the access road. And we're, we're anticipating conveyance of all of this stuff anytime. Um, and we, we should be together on, again, communication, mm -hmm. when that's going to happen, how it's going to happen. Um, another uh, concern came up during our HOA meeting, this testing, which, which we want, um, creates a plume of whatever's in that pond, 75, 80 feet in the air, and it then consume, continues to put that plume out. Um, if it's done to standard, it would be four hours. And I, I say that because it was nowhere near that standard of this test. The last time that they came by to test, Landmark had changed the orifice. Mm -hmm. at, the, at the front of the hydrants and they couldn't test. But I would ask then that we, we, we get some kind of testing on exactly what we're throwing into the air for that community or testing of the water in that pond, finally. That's all I have. Okay. We should send Landmark an email about them notifying when they're going to be doing testing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, yeah, no, but I just mean open statement. We should have an email to Landmark telling them that, like, we want to know when you're doing this. Like, you got to give us a little bit of advance notice. We're not going to tell you not to, but we just need to know. Oh, well, I would say just toss it at Chuck. Okay. okay. Next item is the special meeting town hall. Um, I'm thinking we should schedule this for April, but we want to do that based on like we had talked about with Hydroterra on the dates that DEP says they're willing to meet and then have it hopefully uh, close behind that. But if let's say we meet with them on April the 15th, we try to do it maybe the, the following week. Um, sooner rather than later is definitely the, the, the preference on all that. I have been getting calls of people stopping in asking questions about the sewer project. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's 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 time for it. It really is. Um, especially with the election upcoming, I'm sure that's a, a hot topic in a lot of people's minds around. Yeah. Did I see a hand? No? Okay. Um, the next item on the agenda is the Stonecroft Village deed for open space lot 215. Lot 215 contained all the open space properties within Stonecroft Village section William Penn Boulevard has been conveyed to the Stonecroft Homeowners Association uh, incorrectly. It was supposed to be conveyed and deeded to Marion Township. Uh, Colin, our solicitor, has spoken to Landmark about splitting the deed to correctly identify Marion Township as owner of the por that portion of Lot 215. He hasn't heard that. Okay. Okay. I, I hadn't seen anything, but sometimes I, I miss things. Oh, I got it. Okay. Uh, next is the Emergency Management Coordinator's Report. Um, I got this this morning, and I'll be honest, I've read through some of it, but I haven't read through it enough to, to talk about it. Um, John has requested several maps as part of this, though, and we got an email from Chuck with the price. I believe all the, the really large maps and everything came to a total of like $2,800. Um, let's motion on that Thursday night, but I, I don't... <clears throat> yeah, just have it under the EMC report. That's fine. Um, but I, I have no problem with authorizing that. It's all things that we need for emergency response and everything else. So um, the flood kit agreement, 
Um, I looked at that. It looks good. It covers all the, the things that I was concerned about. The only thing that I had as kind of a follow-up question is we're, we're conceivably, uh, conceivably getting these things out with the gas units with a full tank of gas. We're conceivably going to get them back empty. People are not going to have gas sitting around at home. Are we going to be charging for the gas? Are we just taking that as a, a goodwill outreach to the township? How are we uh, planning on attacking the um, probably about five gallons worth of fuel that these things are going to go out with and then probably not come back with? So other than that, I like the agreement. I think we just need to add something in there about responsibility for fuel. Um, and that might just be a simple matter of we, we fill it up and we, in the agreement, we say that you, you will agree to, to pay for the, the cost of refill, refilling the tank after your completion of use or something. And then we obviously wouldn't charge anything extra. It would just be we have Butch pick up a five-gallon thing of gas and fill it up. And then we say, okay, it was $20 or something. Um, but I think we want to cover ourselves there. It's not going to be a huge amount, but it's going to be a, a small hemorrhage in, in funds. Do you want to talk about that Thursday? Yeah, we'll talk about that Thursday. And I want to talk to Colin about that and see if he has any suggestions or if he can just quick add that and then we can ratify it based on that uh, change. Um, next is the Creek View Dairy Operations at 952 Route 419. Uh, we are still waiting for the property owners to supply the amended NPDES permit and to revise the plans to address the situation uh, by providing a corrective action plan. So apparently they have done what Mr. Rickards at BCCB wants them to do and then they have to submit the notice of termination paperwork for the NPD permit. Okay. And then they submit that paperwork. That inspects it, says yes, looks good, done. Okay. Well that's and then I fantastic. guess they request release of their letter of credit, I think. I don't think yeah. check, check it. Check yeah, it. we can't release check it back. We can't release the letter of credit until the NPDES right. is terminated. Right. So okay. That's good. That's actually that's that's been on the, the agenda for months and months and months. Yeah. Glad, I'm yeah. glad that it's it's finally kind of closing out. Um, next is the Colbert projects. So this is we had a bunch of action on this. Rikert Road is pretty much entirely installed. I want to give a, a very special, very public thanks to Ryan and Butch for all their hard work. It looks fantastic. Um, what we're gonna have to do to navigate the whole cost situation that we had with stuff not being done to PennDOT standards and all that jazz is we are going to accept the other three culverts. They're, they're going to take like $12,000 off the total bill. We will pay for that out of the general fund and Charlie Paris is going to help us navigate the rest of it. So Chuck has been working with him. And while all of the things are actually part of that one project, it's they're all four being viewed by PennDOT as one project. If we were to let's say bid out or treat just the guide rails and just the paving as separate projects and work with Charlie project numbers and all that fun stuff, that would shift those pieces over to being eligible to be used with liquid fuels. So really we would just be paying for the culvert and like the crane and stone and things like that out of the general fund and we'd be shifting some of the cost back over to the road fund. Um, with that said, if we can find a paving company that is CoStars, we don't have to put it out to bid because that already satisfies PennDOT's requirements. Um, we would just need to initiate the project with Charlie, get that queued up so that all the, the requisite red tape is satisfied and then turn them loose. So in the case of Rikert, where we're waiting on the paving, we might be able to move relatively quickly on that, like one to two weeks. Uh, the guide rails, uh, I'm kind of concerned are going to take longer. So we need to talk to Chuck and Charlie on what are some temporary measures that we can do while we're waiting. Um, I was spitballing with Sue and not the full like concrete Lego blocks, but those little like skinny wing ones might fit where we, we need to put the dividers on the road. That way we could open it up in, in advance of having the guardrails put in. Because uh, I know in the past we've had a, a very difficult time getting any interest from guardrail companies to come out and do projects, let alone get more than one to submit a bid. So that one I think we're going to have to fight with a bit, but we can at least maybe get the roads open and continue doing the rest of the culverts. Um, 
with, with that said, kind of as an addendum, I mentioned to Butch when I was talking to him this morning, um, with us paying for things out of the general funds, and I think we should use the ARP money for the culverts based on just the sudden kind of shift for that. We need to use it within a certain span of time anyway. This is kind of a, an unexpected uh-oh that occurred that will, that'll cover pretty much all of it. Um, we can use that, cover most of that, and then look at doing additional road work that was not normally on our, our itinerary this year with some of the liquid fuels money, whether that's repaving a road, doing some oil and chip, replacing maybe another culvert somewhere or a, a little stream crossing. We can start looking at doing some of that this year that we weren't anticipating originally. Um, there's always school road. Well, yeah, I, mean, but I, I don't, I don't know if we, I, I mean, there's always school road, but what I said to Butch is like, there's some roads that if we oil and chip them, we'll get more life out of them. They're starting to degrade and we can limp them along by doing that. Then otherwise we can fall back to that road plan that I put together. We look at the two zones that are on, on the, the rotation for this year and see what, what needs to be done most critically and then find, find it within the budget. Um, so I, I just, I rattled off a lot. Do you have any questions about that? Well, I'd just like to talk to Chuck about putting safeguards in place. And, uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Because I'll be honest, like being a layman in this, when I read through the stuff that like McCarthy was talking about, like Pub 408 is the road standard. So that to me, that's like, if it's not Pub 408, it's not PennDOT. Or if, if it says Pub 408, it has to be PennDOT. So if there's more stuff that needs to be done, and the, I. To your point, we need to have Chuck on board. We need to have Colin look at it so that there's we're, we're airtight from a legal and engineering standpoint. So the next one of these that we bid out, whenever it is, that we don't have to just kind of mix up I again. Think, I think bottom line is anytime you dig up in a road for whatever reason, you need to cover we call it. Charlie. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, agreed. Like just minimize it that. Say yeah, anytime talk to Charlie you first. It, yeah, Charlie. yep, agreed. So it's. I don't need to know about that. At yeah, least and like contacted him. the confusing thing is, like in the past, anytime we've done stuff, McCarthy Engineering had had done that because, like, I've I've been personally been on calls with Charlie and somebody from McCarthy about like when we did I forget what it was. I think it was Hickory when we were working on Hickory Road down there. Like that, all of that clicked together exactly the way it was supposed to. So I'm not a different thing. thing. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe I'm thinking of something else because I've been on the phone. I've been on the phone with him for some, some other thing. Was it? Um, there wasn't there something. It was. It was when Peter Wallace was still here. It was the um, not school road. It's real close by to school road that they did that like the pipe under the road. Oh, we're, we're splitting hairs, but either way. That there is usually a, a, a chain of connections that happens for anything like that where Charlie gets involved. I think that got omitted this time. So to clarify that and say, anytime we want to use liquid fuels money, money. You're digging up the road, Charlie. You gotta call Charlie. Well, I mean, honestly, anytime we want to use liquid fuels money and it's not salt, just call Charlie. Simple. Yeah. Um, bottom line there, but I, I agree with you. We need to we need to take a lesson learned from this and make sure that we, whether it's us on the board or anybody else, that it doesn't happen. Yet. But while we can adjust from this, and I'm thankful that we have the ability to adjust from this, this would be this would have been difficult if we weren't in the same financial situation that we are. I'm thankful we have the ARP. Yeah. Us. Yeah, yeah, that's self-explanatory. Um, Irene, do you have anything that you want to toss in on the Colbert projects? Uh, yeah, I guess uh, just circling back to the ARP funding, then I guess at the Thursday night meeting, can we designate the full amount to be used towards the Colbert project? And um, I'm not quite sure how we have to word that because it only pays for about half of the Colbert project by the estimates that we've received. So, but that makes it much easier for me to do reporting on when we have to uh, report that to uh, the government. So. Okay. We because should just be able to authorize the, the use of the ARP money towards the Colbert project. We don't have to say that it's covering a percentage or all of it. It's just we are using it towards the Colbert project, the full amount. No, 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 no. Filed right, out right, right, the full amount the, and, uh, and just whatever restate the full have. amount. Say again? Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Restating the full amount, that's all that I, that I really need. So this way, it's in our meeting minutes, and when I submit a report, then that's, it's done. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll, 
I'm going to be leaving the meeting in about 10 minutes, okay? Okay. Thank you, Irene. So thank you. I'm still going to stay on until I get to my destination. Uh, she said she's just going to she's going to be on until she gets to her destination. Um, did you motion to did you motion to accept that three thousand dollars less per culvert? I don't, think uh, we did, did you? I don't know if we did, but let's let's do that. Yeah, add that for Thursday night. Let's do that. Um, that way we formally accept that. But that's honestly that's our best strategy because yeah. Okay, next is also around culverts. It's the additional concrete for Reichert Road. Uh, we needed 10 extra cubic yards. Um, is that, is the cost breakdown of that in the packet or? No, it was the same cost, I think. It just, um, they needed more cement. Okay, well, I'll. Was, I think it was the same cost. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the, the purchase of the additional 10 yards of concrete needed for the Reichert Road project. Second. Roll call for you. Aye. Irene? Aye. And Jim? Aye. Okay. Next is the ROARS Quarry credit application. Um, I don't think we really have to do anything with that. Well, because you're opening a line of credit. Well, I mean, we already, we already motioned to, to approve the doing Did you it. Did do that for this one? No, we had a bunch of them that they wanted, they wanted credit applications for. Am I thinking of the wrong one? No, we had, we had LB Water. Oh, no, no, we did LB Water before. Uh, yeah, I think you did. Just okay, well, just, just to be safe, I'll make a motion to authorize the opening of uh, a credit line with Roar's Quarry. Second. On a roll call, Peter? Aye. Irene? Aye. And Jim? Aye. <clears throat> okay, and then I can't remember, did we? Yeah. No, that, that was, was that was part of it. I think that was yeah, say so that's I, I don't think we have to worry about that. Um the next thing was the barricades and signs. I, I swear we motioned to authorize the barricade. different barricade. Okay. Okay. Because the one added on Riker out at four nineteen yeah. over and got like oh got all messed up. Okay. What do we what do we need, Ryan? Okay, so you want two more of those? Okay, and those are class two barricades? Okay. Mm -hmm. We have it. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I'll... I would say, yeah. Okay. We'll we'll follow up with Chuck on that. Um, I would say let's just get the signs and have them ready to go. So I'll make a motion to purchase two more of the class two wooden barricades for road closure and the, the needed uh, triangular attention signs. Second. Honor roll call, Peter? Aye. Irene? Aye. And Jim? Aye. Okay, I'll get those ordered with MSI on Monday. Okay. Next is the guide rails for the culverts. Um, we're going to want to either look and see if we can't find somebody that is co-stars in the area and see about having them come out and uh, give us a bid or a quote for doing the guide rails. Um, my recollection though is there's very few firms in the area that do guide rails and it's very hard to get them to, to show any interest in small projects. So we may have to put this out on pen bid. Um, much like I mentioned before, I think we need to have a very important conversation with the engineer about what some some temporary alternatives are, whether it's even just a caution sign that says like something, um, or putting up the the I don't know what the actual name of it is, but they're they're those cement blocks that are kind of triangular right at the bottom and the paper up. Um, putting those along the side of the road as a, an actual physical barrier until we can have the guide rails put in. Um, 
Jersey blocks? Uh, I thought the Jersey blocks were the, the big ones. For the barrier, okay. Um, that we could get a couple of those are relatively inexpensive, and we'd have we'd have uses for them even after the, these set set of road projects. So that one, like I said, that one is a little more daunting than the paving. I'm sure we can find a paving company that's co-stars to get them to come out and do Rikert, and then maybe do the other roads when when we're ready. We call them. We have it prearranged. No, no, it is not. It's not a user friendly website. Um, but I think we need to plug it that one because that one that one's going to be the more challenging one out of the two. Um, I called Martin Paving a couple of times this past week. I haven't gotten a call back. But if Martin Paving is co-stars, and I honestly don't know if they are or not, um, if they are, then we could just say, hey, come out and pave, and we'd be done with it. Uh, I have it written down. I don't remember. I, I left I left messages with their with like their office. I'll try to find the contact person. Like I said, I, I know I have a card somewhere, and I think you're right. I think it is Jeremy, but I, I without looking, I wouldn't be able to say. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we need to need to move on the right the guardrail, and we need to do that as a package. We need the guardrail for all four culverts for what Charlie Paris said to be able to treat it as a project and use liquid fuels money for it. So we're going to need uh, to work with Chuck about getting the designs for the other three reviewed to make sure that we don't have a, a on the guardrails like we saw on Rikert and then take that and put that out to bid to say hey we need x amount of, of linear feet of guardrail here 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 and here um and then work that through front same thing with the painting unless we can find somebody that's co-stars we have to treat them to get it bid out co-stars thing will move to requirement of bids which makes things but um, we may have some difficulty finding that. I think the paving is going to be easy to find some of these co-stars, though. Peter, I need to uh, leave the meeting now. If I could just ask you guys to um, uh, make sure you sign the checks, okay? Uh, sorry, say that again, Irene? If I could ask you guys just to sign the checks, I'm going to leave the meeting now, okay? Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Have a good, good day at work, Irene. Thanks. Bye. Okay. So uh, next item on the agenda, we already talked about the paving. Uh, we got something from Ronnie Folk. Um, I called Martin. We haven't gotten anything back yet, but I think we need to, we need to go down the route of finding somebody that's co-stars and doing that. Because then if we can say, hey, we want to have this paved, do they have availability? We just have them come out and do it right away. Um, and then a couple... This is for Okay, so that has to... Okay, so it's it's going to be less than the fifteen. Less than this. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we'd be looking at probably about ten thousand rather than the fifteen thousand, give or take. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If we can again, if we can find somebody that's co-stars, that we have plenty in the liquid fuels to be able to do that. We just have to make sure that we're doing it right so that we don't get audited. But, okay. Uh, culvert easements. Um, this is the last thing in the culvert section. Um, the wing walls of the Reichert Road box culvert extend uh, just outside of the right of way. Temporary construction easements and permanent drainage easements are needed. Um, Attorney McFarland is preparing the draft easement documents. I, I didn't see anything come through. No, I haven't seen anything. Okay, well, um, we'll send him an email and then make sure that he has that ready for Thursday night. Well, we need to have that place. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No worries. Um, moving right along, the. Next thing on the agenda is the extension of the stormwater pipe along Marion Drive to Main Street. Uh, a motion was made at the February workshop to have Butch, the roadmaster, measure the pipe. Do we have what, what's the pipe that we have sitting out back there? Twenty foot. Okay. So we we would need to get some pipe, but we have probably I'd say about a third of it sitting there already. So. Um, I guess the next step is we have the design from Chuck. Um, 
We need to talk to Charlie Parrish to make sure that we can use liquid fuels money for buying any pipe and any asphalt and everything that we have to do. Um, and then we can turn Butch loose and put it in. So uh, I'll make a note here to email or call Charlie Parrish about drive. Okay, I'll that out today and tomorrow, and then we'll kind of keep on top of that. That's a, a small project compared to the culvert that I think we're going to have a little bit after that. House to be able to work on. Yeah, he's not comfortable. Well, no, no, I'm saying other than the gas line, he could do all the way up to that. No, and, he's not oh, digging. he's not comfortable digging. Okay. Okay. Or Ryan, I know Ryan. Ryan's got a day job too, so yeah. Um, oh, it's just it's like from the intersection where like four twenty two is down to the the intersection at Main Street. It's it's maybe I want to say like between sixty and eighty feet. It's probably a little more than that, actually. Yeah. Um, trying to remember, trying to pace and chase it out. We have a design, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is the one that we were talking about a couple of months ago with the gas line there. Any detached structures? Oh, uh, no. No, no. It's, it's just it's a pickup at the one end, and then we would be putting in um, a couple of catch basins along the way. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm not, we're not saying we're doing it like right this second, but we want to kind of start moving on it. Yeah. Oof. Okay. We, we... Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, I mean, six weeks or longer doesn't really matter. We just, yeah. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm... Believe me, I'm not expecting Butch to go out and, or you guys to go out and start doing that like tomorrow. Just, I want to kind of get it in motion. Yeah. Depends on how much they are. Yeah. And again, I think it would be depending on if, I think there was either two or three. We're probably going to be over the 20,000. Yeah. I mean, it'd be close. I was, I was gonna say, like, just a little bit of looking that I did, I got about like 3,000, 3,500. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll talk. I'll talk to Chuck about it. Yeah, I'll talk to Chuck about it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll I'll I'll, I'll talk to. I'll talk to Chuck about it, but I have a feeling we're going to be skirting that bid threshold anyway, unless we can just get stuff that's co-stars and again we circumvent the whole how yeah. to bid it. Um, but uh, I, again, I'm going to be a like right now thing. We've got plenty on our plate. No, 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 no. We've got plenty going on with the culvert, but I figured like Butch was saying, maybe in the fall once we're done with the culverts. <laughs> um. That I want to get that kind of moving because that's been something that's been kind of sitting for a while now. Um, the other one, it's not an agenda item. We don't have to, to do any motioning on it or anything like that. But I would like Chuck to revisit the uh, the canal in the end and see what our options are and see if there's anything that we can do on that because that is we keep throwing keep throwing patch on top of it and it keeps going somewhere. Um, that uh, I think that's that's only going to be a matter of time before that just caves in. So, 
Um, I know we had a design from McCarthy, and I know the, the VCCD stuff was prohibitively invasive and expensive, which means we just got to do it ourselves. Um, but I want to make sure that we do it in a, a way that's going to be liquid fuels like friendly. It, yeah. Well, I want to make sure that it's liquid fuels friendly so that we can use the money out of that. Um, next item on the agenda is the Comcast franchise renewal. Um, Irene did speak to a gentleman by the name of Bill Fraga on March the 14th. Um, we'll get a, a full update from Irene on Thursday night. It's Phil or Bill. Is it Phil? It's Phil? Okay. I will make a note of that. Uh, next is the Western Berks Joint Zoning Ordinance 403. This was the amendment about keeping small pets and uh, domesticated farm animals. Uh, Heidelberg's Township Secretary is working on scheduling a meeting, but we have not gotten a date yet. No, she didn't. She didn't. She didn't realize that this had to be scheduled, so she's working on it. <laughs> okay. She'll let us know when it's okay. scheduled. So let's let's maybe give her a bump in a week or two and see to make sure that she did it because I know uh, in the grand scheme of things it's a relatively low priority for I think everybody else. She, so I guess the next thing is to go through the planning commission. Yes. And then it gets moved out to then everybody. Each municipality can say yes, we want to do this too or not. Yeah. That's she was very apologetic because she she missed the emails. Okay. So don't worry. Yeah, like I said, we we'll, just we'll, we'll exactly. bump her bump her in a week and make sure she didn't lose it again. Okay. Um, next is the building and property renovations. Um, as we had discussed previously, the rear wall above the garage is heaving out and it was a uh, safety and just general structural concern. Uh, the band aid for this would cost about $25,000. Um, the full fix for this would be about seventy. dollars um, As kind of a counterpoint, we are looking at potentially demolishing the building and salvaging components and rebuilding the, the new building that we were talking about previously on this location. Um, we have gotten a quote from Empire Services um, for demolition, and it does not include any remediation around asbestos or lead paint or anything like that. That came in at $171,903 with an allowance of $10,000 for removal and storage of items. Um, we need to get other estimates. I believe you said something else was out looking at stuff this past week. Two people have been here having kids with estimates. Okay. Uh, got a phone estimate and they said we need to pay for estimate. Yeah. And then somebody was saying yes. Okay. Okay. The other thing I think that we should consider if we're actually going in, in serious capacity down the avenue of demolishing and rebuilding here is buying the next door property. Yeah, but as soon as it becomes for sale, I think we should jump upon that. Um, I don't want to have to exercise eminent domain. I don't particularly like that, but if we did, it would be a situation where we, we make sure that we, we give a fair amount for the property if we do actually, I'll, I'll say, seize it in the sense of a, a, a governmental entity standpoint. Um, having that extra like three quarters of an acre does it's not a huge amount of space, but it does open up a lot more footprint for us to be able to build upon um, and do things with like parking and salt sheds and everything else. Just talk to this well, yeah, uh, that's, that's kind of my segue point is like we either wait for it to come for sale or we make an inroad and talk to state and say, hey, if we're interested in buying. What are you interested in selling for? So we don't really need a. Mm -hmm. That's that's pretty cut and dry. I'd imagine that's something you just have like Colin do as we're I I, I, Yeah, I don't know how that really works. Yeah, but sure e even if it's yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, it may if we negotiate that with them, it may be easier for us and remove the requirement of a real estate agent if we did eminent domain it. Like, there's always a bitter taste in everybody's mouth, myself included, with eminent domain, but. If we work out with them, and I'm just going to make up a number that we're buying it for $100,000. They're okay with it. We're okay with it. We eminent domain it for that amount. They go on their merry way. We don't have to get a, a real estate agent involved. We don't pay 3% on both sides. And everybody, everybody's happy at the end of the day. So let's figure out the dynamics on that and see if we um, Would it be um, Beverly? There are five siblings. Okay. This so it, I don't know, know who's the who's actual executor. In, I have no idea. Okay. I mean, she's only going to months. So I wonder. I, I wonder if we could ask. I wonder if we could ask Colin to look and see who the executor is on that, being, seeing yeah, as that's know. a legal matter. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, I think that would probably be in our best interest to get that property and then start moving on it so that it doesn't change hands before we can, can snap it up. So, okay. Um, proposed new building, kind of as a segue to that last point. Um, Engineer Hess has provided several building designs. Uh, they also did a, a mock-up on the design that, that I had provided. Um, I made a couple of notes on the one that was sitting on the desk there, but um, overall, we don't need... What was that? Linda and I have looked at various plans. Yeah. Yeah. With a few changes. Yeah, I was going to say, I think... Changes yeah. I looked at that one, and overall, I liked it. The one thing. So I like the idea of you walk in the front door, like here there's two bathrooms, I think there's the three. So you like to walk down all the way to the Yeah, no, that's that's good. We've got the main meeting room, which is twenty-three feet wide, and I don't know how fifty-six. Well, I mean, you can feet? tweak that. I no, just no, 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 like but I mean, the that. dimensions are, I think, are good because it's pretty close to what I had specified. And we've got a couple of storage rooms. We've got a uh, kind of off to the side bathroom. We've got a couple of office spaces. Um, there's a little kitchenette. It's like way, way over from where the uh, secretary is. But, it's okay. We bring our lunch. Um, the, yeah. only, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the only, the only tweaks that I would want to do would be maybe this, like this top corner, sectioning this out so that we could, or, or figuring out a way to have something that was connected to where the treasures and the bathrooms are um, for the historical rooms, so that we could open the building without opening up everything else, that you can, you can make sure that the doors are locked and people can go in and out and still have access to the bathrooms. Um, so yeah, I think we should talk to Chuck about maybe noodling with this a little bit and then getting an architect involved. But I, I like it. It's a very simple, it's a rectangular envelope. Um, the little like foyer thing is is nice. It's a slightly Wait, larger. Can... Yeah, I'd say it's so my, I mean, this is my thought. If, if indeed we are gonna stay here on this property, mm -hmm. maybe make parking spaces out front, have the door. I like the door facing that way, not not around the back of the building. Okay. I would like the so that anybody driving down the street, it, it's honestly people have, it, it's confusing to them. Yeah. Um, so. But I would prefer if the that way. But in the parking area, where the door is very accessible to the public coming in here for permits or whatever. Yeah. Like even voting, people call in here and say, How do I get there? And where's the parking? And I'm out front of the swings. Where's the parking lot? Oh, well, you go around the back, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, let's. I think maybe if we, if we take pieces and kind of rotate, because mm -hmm. I think this, like the main meeting room by the, the, the shape of it, we have to kind of work with the property in the sense that it's right. a long rectangle. Right. This should be up and down. Uh, I guess this would be like north to south, if I'm orienting myself correctly. Yes. Yeah. Um, that should be north to south just to use the space the best, but then we could have kind of some of these other things turned on their side and have it work that way rather than side to side. Um, I think it's totally, totally doable, but I, I like the the general use of things that satisfies the concerns. We have a large gathering space. We have additional meeting spaces if we want to have like the tax collector set up or we have a space where if there's a, an emergency thing, we have the EMC have a space that they can set up a war room. We have the little kitchenettes. We have sufficient bathrooms. We have space for the historical societies. Um, like voting. Voting, we have space for that. Um, escape hatch. Yeah, so we have, an escape, we have an escape hatch. That was the one thing that, that kind of puzzled me about the, the stuff that they sent over is none of them, I thought they had to be like emergency exits on the side I would think so. for any like large space like that. Like, you could. Yeah, well, I mean, I, we should, but I thought that was a requirement that for like fire safety that you had to have an exit for, for gathering spaces. Um, otherwise, like I'd probably want to put a door like on the side here somewhere as like, you know, don't use unless it's an emergency sort of thing, but. Like a Walmart. 
Yeah. And the other, the other thing you have to yeah. think about is if you're going to use it as a heating and cooling center, that kitchenette has to be exactly. bigger. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the other thing. That's a very good point. Um, but I, I mean, like at least we discussed for like for our use. Yeah. We would just need a small dorm room refrigerator, refrigerator and a microwave, a sink, yeah, um, and a little microwave. Yeah, and um, I, I'd actually like one of the things that I'd like to do for you guys is the there's another there's another bathroom here somewhere. Yes, yeah, here that if we could get that kind of swung over so that you guys have a bathroom in the office that you don't have to go and like wander around the building to get to and a kitchen that so that you're you're able to be in your own little like microcosm of things without having to go outside of the envelope. Um, but oh, there is there is there's an exit door on the side there. It's really close to. Uh, there's actually several exit doors, but yeah. the one that's closest is really close to the front door. Which, um, in the case of a, a threat to life and limb, would probably not be the door you want to go out, um, being as that's within uh, shooting distance. But. Uh, that's i think there's yeah there's there's a lot of really good stuff there that we can we can retool but i think we basically take some of the building blocks there and rotate them around so that it fits in the space that we have here. it's it's good like i said it's i like it because it's simple it's a nice rectangular envelope we don't have to do anything crazy that opens up a lot of options like yeah, whole buildings some of the other ones kind of little offices that yeah we don't, really we don't need. honestly we, we need the big like office bullpen area for you guys and it would be helpful to have maybe one or two or at most three other spaces that way we have something for like the, the emc to use in an emergency but then we also have a small office space that if we need to do an executive session or that we're going to meet yeah. with like the dep for a virtual yeah. call that we don't have, have any, to go the, in the whole meeting e exactly right? you can have something a little more intimate. focused and a little more intimate yes um, for having a conversation like that. And a place for the, the um, tax people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like in the, come in and, and yeah, the, with people. the EMC could set up in or yeah. the same office that the tax collector has, and we could have a you know a desk and a computer right. there. Um, but I, no, I think this is all good. And the the kitchenette in the I'll say the meeting area opens up doors for being able to do like um, let's say like the MTC wants to do a spaghetti night or somebody wants to rent it out to host a wedding reception or something that gives us a lot more use on the space in addition to what is required for like a heating and cooling center you know as far as space like if we if we have an office area maybe a little bit bigger than this room for file storage yeah active files i call them inactive files for the work that happens. yeah stuff we have to keep forever yeah that what do you do with it you, you, you have, have to store it yeah um, we have to have a sufficient you know, amount of space this space this area mm -hmm. dimension wise and we're good yeah the other thing that's not on there that i wanted to add and this is because i'm a computer nerd is a, a closet for yes. for it equipment yeah yeah so mm -hmm. like yep. to me that should be in the same closet as like the main fuse panel because we've got like 20, 12 fuse panels in this place yeah um, we should have all of our electrical stuff and then we should have a punch panel and a rack for if we have a local server, if we have you know, switches, uh, anything for the wireless network control, like all of that should be in a nice centralized yeah. location. Yeah. Um, we should also, in my opinion, have a separate room specifically for the water related stuff. And I don't see anything on there since we don't, we don't want to have a basement when we redo right. this. Um, there needs to be a separate room that has like uh, the, the tank, the pressure tank for the well pump, the hot water heater. Um, we should also have a space maybe in the same room or a different room with the heaters. So that the heater is in a nice contained space, especially if there is a concern about fire, that it is kept in a, an envelope and we don't burn, burn the whole place down. I'm sure you want to get to uh, yeah, as I say, this is this is all stuff that they'll go through. Yeah. But just looking at that plan, there's there's some things that jump out at me yeah. as like, okay, structurally we're missing some yeah. of the we're missing some of the building blocks here. So, okay, uh, we'll we'll talk more on that, but I think the next step would be let's let's start. Uh, getting together an idea, a design, have Chuck give us a mock-up because we need that to be able to start requesting grants. We need to know how much money we're looking to potentially spend so that we can say, hey, we need X number of dollars. Um, but then once we have that, then we just blow the doors off on asking for every grant we possibly can. Cooling center, grants for putting solar panels on the roof, grants for community involvement, grants for this, grants for that, grants for the other thing. Um, so we did get... Um, email from 
Sean McKee at South Heidelberg um, with two different grant options, and I don't remember what they were for buildings okay. or okay. something like that. Yeah. Um, but I, I that was just something I well, good, good. Didn't yeah, really like I said, dive into. We got to know what we're asking for, but then we just we start chasing literally right. everything. Right, right. Okay, next is the MTCA uh, storage trailer lease. Um, I briefly looked over the column drafts. I didn't see anything that immediately jumped out at me. I want to read it more before we talk about it Thursday night. But I think that really, it covers the, the basic premise of what it is, that they're going to be putting something on our property. We're effectively leasing them the space, even though there's no changing of, of hands for money. And that they agree to certain stipulations around the lease, such as like not storing flammable items in the trailer, um, having the trailer locked, keeping unauthorized individuals from entering it, keeping the, the, the trailer in a, in a suitable, presentable state of repair, um, not making any substantial alterations or improvements unless first approved by us, the landlord. Um, so I, I, I think it's good, but I, like I said, I want to sit down and actually read it uh, end to end and make sure that there's nothing that, that pops out of me as like, Ah, we need to add this, or, or no, this isn't quite what we're looking for. Looking at it, so, it seems it seems pretty ironclad. Pretty ironclad. Uh, right? You did a good job. <laughs> no, I did not hear. I that. did not hear that. So that was one of the stipulations that they keep the the wheels on, or they keep the wheels with it if it's up on some sort of like mooring because it needs to be movable. Once you take that off, that becomes a permanent fixture. What they're talking about. Okay. We'll need, we need to start going to the MTCA yeah. meetings. You better talk to them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next, Conrad Weiser Youth Baseball. They would like to use, our, to use our ball field again during the spring season. I mean, at this point, I'll make a motion to allow the Conrad Weiser Youth uh, League to use the Marion Township ball field during the spring season with the same stipulations as in prior years. Um, Second. Um, roll call, Peter. Hi. Irene is going on. Absent. And Jim. Hi. What time did she leave the meeting? She, uh, geez, I, that was, I want to say it was about 10 o'clock. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's right. 10 10. Okay. I love it. I was like, uh, uh, <laughs> thank you, Linda. You're on the ball. Uh, you know, sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, the next is the we need to appoint the delegate to the Berks County Tax Collection Executive Committee. Uh, this is the governing body that oversees the Berks Earned Income Tax Bureau. All municipalities within the boundaries of Conrad Weiser School District must collectively appoint one primary delegate and one alternate delegate by resolution. Uh, the resolution would be 2023 3. Um, Majority rules on this one. Wolmelstorf Borough, Rob Azernier Borough passed a resolution to appoint uh, Keegan Worley as primary and Gloria Grimm as alternate. So I found out yesterday that Wolmelstorf, Rob Azernier, North Heidelberg, Heidelberg, who's the other one? Warnersville mm -hmm. have already appointed Keegan Worley and Gloria Grimm. So it's already a majority. So we just have to. Ratify you it. still need to do resolution, but I mean, even if you want to appoint somebody different as an hour majority rules. So. Yeah. What do we what do we got to do to get in on these conversations? Because I feel like on some of these things with them being in the cog. Yeah. We, Dave Randler was in yesterday for something personal. And yeah. He said, by the way, all these municipalities already voted because their yeah. meetings are earlier in the month and hours. Okay. So. But I mean, how did they how did they all get on the same page? Because like we Yeah, that's like there's I think Saying, hey, you're going to vote on this night at our meeting, and Rob has already voted these people in. Yeah. By resolution. I'm just, like I said, I'm, I know a lot of them talk pretty regularly because of being in that cog. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, other than joining the cog, like, how do we get in on that conversation? Because I feel there's a lot of stuff that we're either, we either miss or relate to. If you recall, we got an email. Yeah. And asking if anybody was interested. And I actually responded and yeah. said, that yeah. was that was from Burke CIT who yeah. had yeah. You know, if, if no yeah. one's if no one else is uh, it's acceptable yeah. I guess I do so. Yeah. I didn't even get a, a thank you thanks or, for yeah. applying. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel I feel we have a maybe a a, a skipped 
level in communication yeah. on this. So that might be maybe just ask Walmart be like, hey, we're what do you how did you guys decide this? Because like we're okay with it, but we wanna we wanna know <laughs> what's going on. Rachel. Rachel called here saying, hey, Rabazonia called me and said they're voting for Keegan Worley and Gloria Grimm, and so are we, because we don't know who else to put in. If you want to vote for them too, I'm like, okay. Well, at that point, it was still like two weeks ago. Yeah. You know, now everybody's had their meetings. Yeah. So, so yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. I think Thursday night we'll, we'll ratify it. There's not much else to do with it, but I'm just yeah. kind of curious if we can get involved in that conversation earlier, because it seems like we got that very it much. To be like on the tail, everything in Mary Tap is the tail end. Um, mm -hmm. Um, because our meetings are later in the month. Yeah. So well, I just mean even there had to have been some conversation or an email or something that went out yeah. before this that we weren't a part of. Maybe they email amongst themselves. Well, that's what I, I mean. Know. Like how do, yeah. how do we get on their distribution yeah. list? <laughs> um, so we'll we'll do that Thursday night, and then I think the bigger thing is like we just gotta maybe pry at Walmart and, and, and be like this just came to light through Burke's EIT because of yeah. it. But that original email said that they nobody's been appointed for this for, 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 for forever. Yeah. yeah, I didn't even know there was. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's, it's a new one on me. But yeah. okay, uh, yeah. next item is the Berks County Public Works Association. A meeting will be held on April thirteenth at the Oli Fairgrounds. The educational portion of the meeting will be presented. The L law or a motion is needed to determine who may. Have um, Say we just put a vote for Bill. Anybody else? Yeah. It's up to you. Yeah. We can take a motion to go on there. If you're interested in the Berks County Public Works Association meeting, I'll hear the vote. Sorry, Bill. Say. On a roll call, Peter? Hi. Jerry? Say, I'm absent. Is absent. And Jim? Hi. If you guys want to know, go, let me know. <laughs> okay, next is the complaint that we got from the residents at 3955 Wintersville Road at the corner of Wintersville and Stouchford Road. Uh, this is the complaint that they had previously about tractor trailers cutting through their yard. Um, we had previously put in signs. We had actually put up stop signs and do not turn one direction if you're like a truck over a certain size. Uh, evidently, people are not taking that to heart. So I reached out to Chuck and Chuck needs to give me some suggestions on uh, what else we can do there. Because the, the owner previously had large stones, which while they served the purpose of preventing trucks from, from turning, they also presented a, a very large safety and legal hazard for if somebody were to have an accident involving the stones because they were technically within the township's right of way. So we need to look and see what we can do to try to help these individuals out. Um, I don't, yeah, <laughs> that might have the. Yeah, I want to see what, I want to see what the options are, because the guardrails are certainly an option that it would certainly satisfy the, the concern around the trucks property turning, but the property owner might not like it, yeah. So yeah, I want to see what our options are, and then I'd like to actually sit down with the property owners and say, hey, here's here's what we've got in the toolbox, so to speak, of what we can do. Uh, we want to make sure that this isn't happening. The first step is putting up the signs, but people are ignoring the signs. We need to be a little more invasive. So obviously the stones, while effective, were kind of a safety hazard, which is why we had them remove them, but we want to, you know, offer you some other solutions and not leave you, you high and dry. So I need to talk to people. Uh, people will just do it in any way. And then, yeah. 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 That really kind of forces the issue. Yeah. Yeah. So we can just add that into the, the thing. It would actually make the project a little bit bigger, which would help. Yeah, it's an interesting. That, that intersects a lot. Nobody should ever. Yeah, so what, what's happening here is because it's kind of at a, a jaunty angle. You have trucks doing one of these, yeah. and, and 
they're not they're not taking the time to make the turn right. They're just going the lazy route and cutting the corner. Right. I know what they're doing, yeah. but it, it's it's completely agree. Yeah, it's just it's, it's people people follow like electricity. They follow the boundaries. Um, well, it's like a traffic road. Restricted. Yeah. I followed the traffic traffic. It's not a class to be able. Well, it was open at the top. Yeah, no, people are people are nuts. Um, okay, with that said, the next item on the agenda, because we're getting towards the, the tail end of it, is Dutch Valley Food Distributors, their letter of credit has auto increased from $346,515.44. Up to three hundred eighty-one thousand one hundred and sixty-six dollars and ninety-eight cents. Um, no further action is needed at this time, as purely for information purposes. Uh, next item is the Fulton Bank escrow account signatures. Um, Irene would like to add Jim as a signer on the, the escrow accounts. I've signed them. Irene has signed them, but we want to give them away if there's ever a situation where one of us is not available, they can still get signed. So, I I'll make the motion. To actually, you have to probably wait. That way, Jim's not motioning on himself. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah, yeah. That's, we'll do that Thursday night. But um, it's a pretty simple matter. You just go up to Fulton and they'll guide you on the signature cards. Uh, next up is the PennDOT traffic monitoring. PennDOT will be doing traffic counts from March 1st, 2023, through November 16th, 2023, on Woods Drive between School and Smalls Roads. They pick a less traveled road. Really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think this is there was some something that they were going to be doing in conjunction with the like the bridge replacements. And I think this, this this data collection program is being implemented to help improve PennDOT's traffic data inventory goal inventory critical to safety management in coordination with FHWA's model inventory of roadway elements. Whatever that means, that, that I have is, no idea. Helpful. <laughs> so they they're they're doing a study to to, to update something, but I, I think while this is a, a road less traveled, so to speak, I think this has some either direct or tangential feeder into their their bridge projects that they're doing in the state. Okay. Um, so really, there's nothing we have to do. Just be aware that there's going to be people from PennDOT sitting out there counting cars. Yeah, it says please disseminate this information to everyone. Yeah. So just for awareness, if you see somebody counting cars out there, it's yeah. it's it's above board. Just ignore. Them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then the last item on the agenda is the State Transportation Commission and PennDOT Transportation Survey. Um, this is the 2023 public comment period. It's open from March 1st through April 30th. Um, I think we just need to look that over and make sure that there's not anything that raises yeah, the flag. Yeah, it's said that they want us to make this available to the public yeah, people so, we'll, so they can go on and do the survey thing that they want to. So, yeah. so we'll put it up on the bulletin board and we'll put it on the website. Yeah. Um, if I haven't gotten like a digital copy of that forwarded to me, I sent. I forwarded the email. I, I, I might not have seen it, but okay. I'm saying if, if you didn't, please send it to me. Okay. Otherwise, I'll find it. I'll send it again. Um, okay, that's the final item on the agenda. The last thing is the supervisor's comments. I, I don't have any additional comments that we did not cover during the course of the meeting. Jim. Okay, Sue. No, I had a note to myself about the change order for Monarch, but I'll put that on the menu. So nothing okay. else. Linda. Nope. Okay, fantastic. In that case, I will make a, a motion to adjourn the meeting. The time is now 1046 a.m. Sick. Irene is absent. Jim? No, you didn't. Just Peter. Hi. Peter. Say roll Hi. Call Peter. <laughs> Peter. And Irene is absent. And Jim? Hi. Okay. 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 Meeting, meeting adjourned. adjourned. Thank you, everyone. We'll